Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about your hair. Wavy, straight, frizzy, black, gray, brown, red, and all the combinations thereof. You can bleach it, you can dye it, you can dreadlock it, you can do whatever you want, but it complements appearances, and it's great until you don't have it. So let's talk about hair loss today. Hey guys, Dr. Nene here. I practice as a cardiothoracic, vascular, and general surgeon, and I'm now a health tech innovator who wants to improve lifespans and lifestyles. So stay healthy, stay curious, and keep watching. So everyone is beautiful, whether you have hair or not. But the idea is why did we form hair? I don't think anyone knows what the teleologic reason for having hair is, um, except for the fact that it covers parts of your body where you lose a lot of heat or you need to be camouflaged. Now, in, on the top of your head, I would say it acts as a covering which uh, retains heat. But what is hair? It starts with the all about the follicle. It's part of the integument and it basically grows from there, but it has uh, sebum glands and have uh, other things. The growth of a hair follicle and the hair that comes out of it is divided into three different segments. Anagen is where you have maximal growth and this is when the hair actually comes out. Then it goes into catagen. It's transitioning from growth phase to rest phase. And then there's uh, telogen where it stopped growing. Why that's important will be apparent as we continue, but the idea is certain things act in different places. Let's talk a little bit about what is hair loss and why it's interesting. Male pattern baldness or female pattern baldness, what we call androgenic alopecia, alopecia is a simple term for hair loss, is the most common type of hair loss and then constitutes 50% of all hair loss out there. The remaining 50% is divided into autoimmune diseases, into uh, sometimes trauma from tightening bands or bringing your hair back too tightly. Um, it can also happen from uh, hormonal imbalances um, in the way of um, different types of uh, uh, medical problems during pregnancy or alternatively from polycystic ovarian disease can also do it which has huge fluctuations in androgen and estrogen and as a result of that can lead to it. Um, and then finally it can also happen from certain types of infections so it's important to figure out which one of these things is affecting you. Now what are the signs and symptoms of hair loss? Um, I look at six different things. One is a receding hairline. The second is a less dense hair mass. The third is seeing more hair coming out. Now, it's interesting about that. How much is too much? You have about 100,000 hair follicles on your head and you lose about 50 to 100 uh, strands of hair a day. And so, if you're noticing that your brush is filling up every time you brush your hair, or you're noticing when you run your fingers through it that it uh, comes out very easily, then that's certainly a sign that you could be going, undergoing some type of aberrant hair loss. Pain or itching is something you see in um, different types of autoimmune diseases, as well as in different types of infectious diseases. So all of these clues will help your doctor to figure out which one of the different reasons it could be. And the key is to rule out things which you can change, right? If you're undergoing chemotherapy or radiation therapy, look, you can't change that. But the good news with that is once you stop your therapy, that actually comes back and that actually involves the antigen phase of um, the hair growth where you're get, getting a lot of growth. And so if you can figure out why you're getting the hair loss first uh, and it's it's treatable, then it's not an issue. Um, the most common type of hair loss though is what we call pattern baldness. Now this is a very interesting disease and it's not even a disease, it's a genetic described um, phenomenon and in males it's thought to happen on the AR gene but there's 69 other genes in your whole or, or 69 other uh, proteins in your in your uh, genome which could be responsible for it. So we don't understand it 100%. But what they originally thought was that uh, it had, it was, it came from the mother's side of the family 
And that by and large is where it happens. So if your mother's father was bald, there's a good chance you will be. But the other thing which was interesting is when they looked at twin studies, the con identical twin studies, 80% of the time if one twin went bald early, the second twin would as well. So it's very clear that male pattern baldness does have a genetic root. In females, we also see some of this evident, but it comes on much later because the hormonal um, milieu is different. You don't have as much testosterone and androgens, which is what causes it. You see that after um, menopause when the amount of estrogen that women are, are uh, having in their body goes down. So the other interesting thing about it is if you wait long enough, all of us will have some degree of uh, baldness. And the, the question is why? And I think it's genetically coded and 80% by 80 will have it in males, 50% by 80 will have it in females. So now you've identified that you're going bald or you're losing your hair. What can you do about that? 50% of the cases are gonna be uh, some type of male or female pattern baldness, which is genetic. For the remaining 50%, some things will reverse once you stop the medicine or the treatment which is causing it. Other things like infections um, or uh, fungal infections or other infections you can actually treat with medications and make better. Um, or alternatively, if it's from tying your hair too tight or things like that, that can be corrected. So the key is to sort out if those other 50% are there. Now let's say you're in the male pattern or female pattern genetic variant of, of that. Are there things you can do? Absolutely. Um, there's a set of medications, interestingly, which when used regularly will actually result in hair growth and even potential hair recruitment. And those include minoxidil, where minoxidil was originally used as a uh, blood pressure medication, but what they noticed as a side effect is when you applied it to the scalp, you would have hair growth. Interestingly, it can take up to four months to a year to see significant increases in hair growth. And the other problem with it is once you stop the minoxidil, the hair growth stops. And so you have to be on it continuously. And so if you're noticing that you've got some type of pattern baldness, male or female, this is something which could help in those cases. Now keep in mind that none of the drugs will work if you have scar tissue there, and that would be more associated with autoimmune or with infectious hair loss, not with uh, male or female pattern baldness. The second medication which people have used in the past is finasteride. And finasteride is an anti-androgen, so it blocks androgen secretion. As a result of that, will basically prevent or treat androgenic alopecia. Again, with finasteride, it is more effective, but it's orally taken, it's a systemic drug, and it does have uh, significant side effects and the fact that you can have gynecomastia, you can have um, tenderness um, because it's blocking all your androgens, you can also have other side effects from it like nausea, vomiting, some of the other things. In cases where you have lost a significant portion of your hair, um, you can do hair transplants where they take cuticles from other parts of your body or from the scalp, which has some, and distribute it in a broader distribution across your scalp and allow it to grow. And that does have significant success. Uh, but again, it's invasive and it does take time and it has to have the hair uh, actually grow. So that is an option which you're using. Now there's a couple of other interesting ones which are um, not as well studied, but one of them is a red light laser which uh, supposedly stimulates follicular growth. And then the last one is a platelet-rich plasma which has been injected and in some studies has been shown to uh, increase your hair growth by stimulating various uh, local growth factors um, for your follicle. So in summary, hair loss is something which most of us will see in our lifetime. Um, it's genetically controlled in 50% of the cases and in the other 50% they, there are potentially reversible ways to treat it. The key is if you're seeing the signs and symptoms you need to go in and see a doctor 
and they need to determine which of the cases is there. Once we can determine that, then we can figure out whether we need to put you on medications or in worst cases um, to do hair transplants. Finally, I'm gonna say this, that bald is beautiful too. So don't think by any means that you have to have a full head of hair and that any of that matters. Um, I can tell you in, in the uh, motion picture industry and others, for people who have had a lot of manipulation in the way of, of brushing, hair drying, um, and very harsh climates, it does tend to occur even faster still. And there, you know, people expect you to have it on screen, but what I'm gonna say to you is, um, see what your comfort level is. I think that you can fix this if you want to, but I think either way, it's how you feel, not how you look. One comes from the other. And so the bottom line with hair loss is, um, it is something we can determine, diagnose, treat. It's very common and it's something which uh, you can live with or live, live without your choice. Don't forget to jam the like button if you've liked what we've said and hit the subscribe button so you won't miss another episode. And finally, share this with all your friends and let us know what your thoughts are and whether you've had to face this as well. Thanks for joining us.